Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Linda. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything in fashion. So on today's tutorial, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to cut and sew this two-piece dress that consists of a simple straight bustier gown and an H-shaped tool net that has a bell sleeve. If this seems like what you're interested in, you might want to hit the subscribe button and also tap on the notification bell so we can dive into the main video right away. Here on my work table, I have 6 yards of Ankara print, I have 5 yards of my tool net and then I have 2 yards of my planing and also 2 yards of estate. So the first thing I went ahead to do is to fold my fabric just like you see me doing and then the first thing I measured was my bust point. So I'm taking away 5 inches for the off shoulder because it's an off shoulder bust here. So I'll go ahead and mark my bust point, my under bust and my half length. After which I'll go ahead and connect the lines into a straight line just like you see me marking. After I was done with that, the next thing I did was to take my nipple to nipple measurement which is also known as my bust span and then I went ahead to connect it into a straight line just like this. I also decided to add my chest line measurement so I went up by 2.5 inches for my chest line. So just go ahead and get the measurement for your chest line which is like 2 inches to 3 inches above your bust point and then just connect it. So after I was done with that, the next thing I did was to measure 1 inch on both sides of the straight line just like you see me marking. Just go ahead and just draw the line like this and then get your curve ruler and draw a curve to meet at the bust point. Repeat the same thing on the opposite side and then you are getting the curve for your bust here. So go ahead and mark 1 inch on both sides at the upper bust which is around the chest line and then also connect with your curve ruler. You can as well just make your dart to the far from this one. So I've gotten my dart. The next thing I did was to mark the measurement for the chest line. So I'm going to get the round measurement of my chest line and divide it by 4 and then added 2 inches that I removed for my dart and then also on the bust point I'm going to mark the quarter of my bust circumference plus 2 inches sewing allowance and also add 2 inches sewing allowance around the chest line. Then for the under bust I'm going to repeat the same thing by getting the circumference of my under bust round and divided by 4 then I add my dart which I'm going to take away and also add my general sewing allowance. I also did the same thing for the waistline. So after I am done getting my measurement, the next thing I did was to connect it with a ruler into my body shape. After I was done connecting, the next thing I would do is just to mark half of an inch for the joining allowance and then I'll go and create a curve around the upper chest line. Just like this, just mark about one inch deep around the middle and then curve your ruler use the curve ruler to create a curve for the bust here so just measure one inch around the armhole and then one inch around the middle and just connect it i also didn't forget to add my 0.5 inches for my swing allowance and after which i went ahead to cut out all the patterns just like you see me doing so guys, this is what it looks like after I was done cutting the front piece. So I'll be using this front piece to cut out the back piece by placing them directly on top of another folded fabric just like you see me folding. I also added 2 inches for the zipper allowance for this part. So go ahead and just mark 2 inches all the way down from the top like this given the length that you want for the back piece. So I'll just mark uh, my nipple to nipple measurement of about 3.5 inches plus 0.5 inches which makes it 4 inches. Then I'm going to place my pattern close to it this way and then trace out the sides. After I am done tracing out the side, I connected my that upwards and then roll down that line to close the shape for the back. So I'll go ahead and just slant it a little bit and then cut it out. That is just basically all for the back piece. It's really not hard. And then I just cut it out and then mark an arrow to know the part that goes upwards. Next, I folded my fabric to cut out the skirt pattern using the wideness of my hip and I went ahead to mark my hip line which is 8 inches and then my knee line of about 20 inches and then the length of the gown. So I'll go ahead right now and mark the quarter of my hip circumference and then also go to the upper part like this just like you see me marking. I'll be imputing the quarter of my waist circumference plus 1 inch for the dart intake and then at the knee line I'll go ahead and subtract about 1.5 inch from the hip line and then mark what I have left there just to create the shape for the skirt. So I'll go ahead and use my curve ruler to just bring out the shape of the skirt and connect it all the way down using my straight ruler. So you can just go ahead and make it exactly this way or you can just 
bring out the shape a little more to make it straight okay so go ahead and just add two inches all the way just like you see me doing and then connect it as well and after that go ahead and cut it out So guys, after I was done cutting the front pattern for the skirt, I folded another piece of fabric and then placed my front piece right on top of it, giving 2 inches for the zipper allowance and then I went ahead to add the necessary curve for the butt. So what you see me doing here is contouring of the shape of the butt so that your skirt won't just be flat around your butt so go ahead right now and just make your curve this way a little more pronounced if you have a larger butt and then all you need to do is just to trace out the other sides of your skirt and cut it out the only difference is that you have a zipper on the other side which you need to follow and then also go ahead and notch and also cut out and remove the excess fabric you have around the other part and that's basically all for the back piece so guys, this is what it looks like after I was done cutting out my patterns and then I also decided to cut out the lining piece as well. So for the front piece, I cut out uh, a pattern. Okay, this is just to create a posture to make my posture a little bit firmer. And I also attached my stay. I hope you can see that. So I'm going to set this aside right now and then for the skirt, I have my lining as well. So I just traced out a lining for the duplicate and I'll be attaching that on the same machine of the camera. So guys, over to the tool net, we're going to be cutting an A-shaped tool net. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to go ahead and fold my fabric just like you see me illustrating. And then I'm going to take my basic measurements for a gown. This is just a simple gown. Go ahead and take a half of a shoulder measurement here and then connect it into a straight line with the ruler. And after you're done, you go ahead and also impute your uh, armhole measurement, half of your armhole measurement, and then mark what you get there. Also go ahead and connect it to your curve ruler just to be accurate. And when you're done with that, go ahead and create the slope for the shoulder line and afterwards go ahead and impute your neck line measurement okay so here i'm marking four inches by four inches so just go ahead and impute whatever me measurements you need for your neckline and then connect it just like you see me doing so next thing i did was to add extra two inches because this is a free two net gown so you just as if you are just having excess measurement to allow it to become free on your body so also go ahead and connect it diagonally like this before cutting it out So guys, this is what I had after I was done cutting the A shape for the two net dress. I'm going to head over and cut out the back piece as well by placing the front piece right on top of the back piece. And then I will go ahead and measure two inches just like this for the back neckline and then connect it into the neckline and cut it out following the front piece. On the area where the back piece is unfold, I'm going to be cutting through by 4 inches. This is to allow us to insert our heads because there is no zipper for the back piece. Then I went ahead to trace and cut out the remaining sides with my scissors. To determine the length of my tool net, I'm going to take the overall length for my gown and then what I had was 60 inches. I had excess of about 3 inches which I'll be taking out later. For now, I'm taking the measurement which I want my Ankara fabric to have so i'll go ahead and measure 12 inches plus that three inches which i'm taking out makes it 15 inches so i'll go ahead and cut out the three inches excesses and what i have left is 12 inches now you can choose to make yours 10 inches if you don't want it to be very bold so for me the size of what i cut out is going to be replaced by ankara print i also went ahead to trace and cut out the same measurement for the back piece now I folded my fabric in two like this, just like you see me doing, just to be able to duplicate the two nets I cut out for the A-shape after dress. So guys, the next thing I did was to rule a straight line just to guide me in cutting out the straight pattern. After that, I went ahead to cut out my pattern. So this is what I had after I was done cutting the both pattern for the front and back A-shaped dress. 
I'm going to be cutting out two more pieces for the lining. So I'll go ahead right now and just set it aside and then I'll be cutting the sleeve. So I'm folding my fabric into four because I want to cut the both sleeves at once. So don't want to cut them one after the other. Go ahead and take your necessary measurements for your sleeve. Make sure you have some allowance to make it a little bit free on your hand and then cut it out. This is a bell sleeve. After you're done cutting out the armhole part, go ahead and measure the length of your sleeve. Okay. So this is the total length of sleeve I want to have. I'm measuring 27 inches because it's a very flare and long sleeve. And then I'll just go ahead and mark a line just to cut it out. This is a bell sleeve. So what you see me doing is just slanting my hand to make it um um, a shape as well so now after i'm done cutting i'll go ahead and open it up and then i'll measure the length of the tool i want to take away which is to be replaced by my ankara print so i'm measuring 10 inches just like this so go ahead and mark it and then you cut it out So I went ahead to repeat the same thing I did for the other part of the dress by cutting and tracing through the corners of the tool net for the sleeve. And after I was done, I had just two. I also went ahead to cut out the lining pieces for it. Over here, you see that I've cut out the lining pieces for the main A-shaped dress and I'm just laying it out carefully on my work table for you guys to see what I'm actually doing. So this is just the lower part of the tool net and you can see i replaced it with ankara fabric and also i used an air stay to keep it firm and stronger then i'll go ahead and join these two pieces together same thing i did for the a-shaped tool net is what i also did for the sleeve so i'll go ahead and join these two pieces together including the lining piece so guys as you can see i've already gone ahead to work on the skirt pattern i added my lining to it and stitched them together and also i stitched the darts then for the upper part i did the same thing i stitched the lining and the fabric halfway because i'm going to be inserting the hand the strap okay then for this part which is the bustier i've done the necessary pattern and then this is how it looks like after i was done you can see the straps that i attached i did so because i don't want it to be completely off shoulder this is optional if you like you can get it off shoulder but i want mine to be reversible so i'll just go ahead and place them this way and then stitch it before doing so i'll attach my lining to the bustier and then stitch it like this from this part just like this and then this is what it looks like after i was done stitching Okay, so this is what um, the strap looks like after I was done attaching them to both sides of the gown. That is the front and this is the back. So what is left for me is just to fix my zipper on the back piece and also shape and close the back together. So I marked 2 inches below my hip line and then I measured 12 inches extra for the space I want to close and then the rest is for the zipper and then after I was done I went ahead to close the lower part like this and I will go ahead and fix my zipper later on because I don't have a zipper now. So the next thing I did was to outline my body measurement and then after I was done I connected it into a straight line using the 2 inches sewing allowance I gave initially. And then I did the same thing for the other side as well. I also added 0.25 inch for ease allowance. And this is the final stage in making this dress. So after I was done marking, I went ahead to stitch them on both sides on the machine. And this is how beautiful it came out looking like. So this is the inner part and this is the strap I attached earlier. Also, I've gone ahead to attach my zipper and this is how it came out looking like. This dress is looking very beautiful right now. You can choose to rock it this way and you're still good to go. So I'll be setting this aside to work on the A-shaped tool dress. For the sleeve part of the dress, I went ahead to sandwich my tool net in between it and then I closed the both sides by 0.5 inches. As you can see, I attached my hemming gum on the ending part. So I'll just go ahead and turn it over to the right side for you guys to see how it looks like. This is what I had after I was done stitching. So the next thing is just to repeat the same thing on the other sleeve and then iron it out to make it look flat. I also repeated the same thing on the tool net gown itself. So this is what I had after I was done working on the front and the back piece. The next thing I will do right now is to stitch it by half of an inch all the way from the top to the bottom and then I'll be attaching the sleeve as well. So guys, after I was done stitching, this is what I had. This is what it looks like. And you can see that I already work on the sleeve part. Just the same way I work on the other part, which is beneath the gown. And this is what it came out looking like. 
when I open it up, this is what the front and the back side looks like. And then the only thing left is just for me to attach my bias to my neckline. I'll go ahead and pipe my bias around this part where I want my button to sit on. And then I'll also stitch it all the way around the neckline. So guys, that will be the end of today's tutorial. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.